Greetings everyone, and today I would like to continue my random talk that is related with the Russians, Mongols, Tatars and Kazakhs um, mainly about the Mongols <laughs> so um, uh, previously, in my previous video, I talked about the word man and the Mongols being a Mongol or Mangko something like that and man in Asia, in uh, China, Korea and Japan is 10,000 and the um, symbol for the 10,000 is a uh, swastika. So if you travel to you know, Korea and ask for the hotel price, they can like show you like this and say man. It means um, the hotel cost is like 30,000 uh, man. It's like uh, 40,000. Of course, it's going to be in won. So, um, yeah. Um, I also told you that um, shaman and same time uh, lama keeps you know this swastika symbol uh, in his you know home, and um, the reason why, uh, for, in case of a lama, you know these uh, lamas have you know claimed that uh, the sim swastika symbol is a symbol of Bodhita, and everyone knows that this symbol was long before Bodhita, and. Um, uh, generally, you know, swastika in Asia is believed to be, a, uh, you know, this Bodhita's symbol. Why? Uh, it is because swastika is a thunderbolt, and if you ask um, any pagan or this, uh, you know, old traditional dude, um, uh, they will claim that you know, this swastika is a symbol of a Lord of Lightning. If they have Lord of Lightning, or uh, it's the symbol of a, a bird of lightning or thunderbolt bird. Um, or if, if they have like a tundra frog, it's going to be related with the tundra frog, etc. etc. So simply, you know, this swastika is something that is related with the lightning. And, uh, you know, uh, also um, thunderbolt is in, in Buddhism believed to be, you know, this logic. So who, uh, you know, um, talks about, you know, this reality, who talks about logic? It's, of course, a both time. Uh, that's why, you know, this. Tu uh, tu uh, how to say thunderbolt or this uh, swastika is became the symbol of Bodhita. Imagine someone is having you know this swastika symbol and he constantly talking about the purity etc etc. Uh, this is not a Adolf Hitler. It's going to be a Bodhita. So uh, yeah, for traditional people, uh, swastika is something that is related with the uh, lightning. And the reason why I'm talking about you know this swastika, it is because um, uh, here in Mongolia, there is a, a, you know different names for this uh, you know thunderbolt. One is you know this ach ir, meaning go there and come back. This is going to be thunderbolt. Also, this uh, uh, you know swastika is going to be has. Has means to you know uh, it means minus or it means cat. So uh, of course this thunderbolt cats, and from this word has comes a hasak. Uh, if you say zas, uh, it's going to be fixed, and if you say zasak, it's going to be government. A government's duty is to fix and regulate stuff. And if you say has, it's going to be uh, you know this swastika, and same time a uh, word cat. And if you say hasak, it means a cutter. And um, uh, hasak simply means someone who cuts, something like that. So. Um, well, uh, there can be, you know, many different ideas on what, uh, you know, kas means. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Russians have claimed that, you know, this um, Kozak comes from, uh, you know, this uh, Koman uh, word Kozak, uh, meaning this um, free, uh, you know, this uh, dweller, something like that. And um, somehow Russians have a word Koza, meaning goat. And a mountain goat is someone who is, you know, traveling free. And it is quite possible that, you know, um, Kozak comes, comes from a word Koza, meaning a goat. And uh, if it is a goat and it has a one horn, it's going to be a unicorn, something like that. So, uh, about, you know, this Russian claim. Russians claim that, you know, um, uh, in the case of Tatars, there is no such, um, you know, uh, Mongol you know, blood, and mainly they have, you know, this uh, Finn, Finn blood, and they have less uh, Turkic blood in their genes. So, um, I guess, you know, this uh, genetic, how to see, uh, you know, you know, trying to see what's inside is, you know, 
with great scientific stuff and um, uh, they also claim that you know Russian language does not uh, contain uh, Mongol words I mean uh, they uh, Russians are you know Rus Russian historians are writing that they were under the Mongols but why we don't have a uh, Mongol words something like that it is simply you know ignorance and uh, I know that Russian language has a lot of um, not a lot of uh, but few um, you know uh, Mongol words but uh, Mongol words that are uh, used in you know foreign countries is very strange uh, strange or it's uh, maybe something that comes from uh, Greeks for example uh, Mongolian script Mongolian script believed to be have you know this um, belly teeth and uh, uh, this you know this um, uh, you know this script has a start and ending um, the end is called tail because it's you know it has you know this tail like a feature and the uh, top or the head is called Titum. Uh, titum is you know one word with you know this Greek uh, diadema or um, diadem meaning a crown. Titum in Mongolian is of course also of course a crown and um, um, I guess you know Russians also use word uh, diadem something like that. Also um, they have you know this their tsar or this you know ruler and. Um, Tzad in Mongolia is going to be, you know, these kings, you know, the order, and uh, uh, Tsar is going to be someone, you know, this uh, a border. So Tsar is going to be someone who has a border, something like that. So it means, you know, he's a ruler. And, um, you know, Russian kings uh, create Okat, and um, Kat, uh, you know, Kat, Kazakh, and it's, you know, this. Uh, um, uh, it's going to be Ohas. If you say this uh, like a, um, uh, you know, Has is you know cut, and um, you know this. Uh, all the king do is like cutting. I mean, um, if there is something you know wrong is growing, he he has a duty to you know cut, you know stop this thing, and it's going to be or cut something like that. Also, um, you know, um, uh, they have you know this. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the shamanism, and in, sh in shamanism, uh, dolls are very important. And when you are uh, when you are creating, we, we <laughs> I'm sorry, when you create a doll, you uh, try to you know this um, ask the spirits to enter this doll. And there is you know these ideas on voodoo doll and you know this shamanistic doll, etc. etc. Doll in Mongolian is hukulte, and uh, doll in Russian is kukla. Uh, if you say um, doll theater, it's going to be kukulni theater, and um, uh, Mongolian doll is kukulde. So uh, this, you know, uh, somehow Russians have this, you know, uh, you know, Mongol word. Also, I told you know, told you about you know this hair. This hair in Mongolia is called kukul. Uh, Hukul, um, hukul has a, uh, you know, two meanings. First meaning is a um, bunch of hair that is left on a ho horse head or a hu uh, baby or human head. So uh, this is going to be hukul. Uh, Ukrainians call it koko. Uh, koko, um, hukul, it's going to be one word. So uh, Russians have this word. The second meaning of this word is, you know, this uh, participant. I mean, someone is participating in a festival, someone is participating in a party, and actively participating, uh, it means huhul, and uh, this word means a participant. So, um, what else? Mm, well, um, you know, there can be a lot of this stuff uh, that is related with the Mongols and Russians, and um, uh, by the way, um, uh, I noticed that um, this uh, this this hair sometimes you know is short uh, has a short name it's a cock and uh, uh, you know this word is uh, something that is related with the I think uh, related to this English word cocoon cocoon and uh, simply this is you know this um, a bunch of you know this um, hair and uh, this is looks like uh, this insect. Uh, 
cocoon. And speaking of insect cocoon, in, insect cocoon in here Mongolia is used uh, is used in shamanism, and um, uh, this is also going to be this hukilte and uh, doll. So uh, a cocoon is going to be doll, and it's is hukilte, uh, and in Russian is kukla, something like that, uh, cocoon. And um, Awalde it's going to be also this uh, doll, shamanistic doll, and um, I heard you know I heard that you know some uh, Genghis Khan's Okad or this uh, um, law had you know this part when he was he is banning you know this uh, um, torturing, and um, uh, prison system is also torturing. I mean you have you know this um, close someone in this small room and this is going to be some kind of a torturing and it is believed that Genghis Khan did not like torturing and um, uh, all the Genghis Khan does is that you know if the person cannot pay the money uh, you know he is, must be you know this killed I mean uh, you have stolen a horse but you was captured and but you cannot you know pay for this horse you are going to be you know this killed and uh, this is going to be you know this how to say a very fast and effective way and uh, there, you know prison is not needed and torturing is also not needed uh, speaking of torturing uh, torturing here in Mongolia is tamzak and one thing about this tamzak is um, when shaman is you know uh, puts this doll or, you know this um, puts the doll figure or how to say this uh, totem figure and the shaman is doing you know this um, um, his you know ritual and he's entering his trance with you know these drums and uh, this is called tamzak in Mongolian and um, this is similar word to you know this towa uh, uh, word kamzak kamzak kamzani uh, something like that and um, somehow uh, torturing uh, word torturing is used uh, to say you know this uh, you know how to say make a shaman ritual something like that well uh, that's pretty much for today and thanks for watching